Welcome to this new Spotlight add-on. In this Spotlight add-on, we're going to look at the Lockheed Lima 18 Lodestar, which has been released today. The aircraft has been converted from FSX to MSFS, so it's, let's say, not a complete uh, build-up from the, from the ground. It simply is a conversion, and it's currently using the CG4 cockpit. It comes with nine liveries, so that's good. So let's take a close look at it. Uh, as you can see there, it looks looks nice, but you can see it's not completely remodeled, right? Uh, I would say that the details are there, but not as, I would say, uh, fancy as they are with, I would say, completely re recreated aircraft. Uh, so let's go to the inside. A uh, little bit too far down. You see it's uh, partially also remodeled from the inside, right? You can see the, I would say, see the chairs. You can see the uh, stairs here on this side and there's the cockpit right and the cockpit is as I already mentioned is based on the CG4 uh, probably gonna review it from the inside let me do it from this way so here we can see the cockpit it's I would say kind of modern right it's not the CG4 cockpit uh, which you might have expected uh, so looking around, right? So some buttons on the uh, on the top, which looks like a, a phone, which doesn't work yet. Then there are some buttons here, uh, but without a description, so I don't have any clue what they're doing. You can, I'd say, closely closely move them or slowly move them. Might have to do with the uh, ecosystem here or something. Then right in front of us, there's the uh not sure what it what is it looks like some kind of uh 28 volt so it looks like some some charger or something and then here's the uh dashboard itself right multiple buttons here is are the communication radios here's the electrical panel panel the oxygen supply pilot fans uh the buttons to uh manipulate what's being displayed here and then here we've got the information like the route lags, uh, the flight plan, uh, the display menu. And on the right side, we've got the same only then for the uh, co-pilot. So that's cool. Uh, other than that, we have some nice things here. We've got the PFD uh, options here to, I would say, increase the brightness. We've got a lot of uh, lights here. So both the beacons, uh, the belts, the safety uh, logo, the landing gear, etc. Then here we've got the speeding brake, which we can use to brake. We've got the flaps and we've got the throttle. And here we've got the uh, engine starters, right, to, to start the engine. And as last, we've got the rudder trim and the other one here. So let's see if we can uh, get it started. Right, so we need to uh, switch on the battery. Okay, warning incompatible livery. That's nice if you deliver an aircraft with this livery and if it's incompatible, but hey. Switch on the generator. You can see that some of the buttons are not working, right? So the avionics, for example, is working, so you can on switch it on and off. So that's cool. Uh, the same thing is for the uh, Brightness, you can change it. Uh, panel lights, you can change them also. And same thing is for the glare shield uh, lighting. But for example, the uh, lights, if you press them right, you won't see that they're, I would say, switching on. Or you normally you would expect that the light will show up here. But that's not the case. Uh, only the nav lights are working. Uh, so let's see if we can uh, start the engines. Um, so engage for engine starter three left and right and then pressing the buttons here it looks like they're not working yet that's also kind of hard because you can't see it right and due to the fact that you can't change any of the options here that makes it i would say a little bit more uh, problematic 
So let's switch the uh, avionics to on. I'm gonna initialize the position. Flight plan, we don't have it. <clears throat> so we're not gonna provide it. Then in the perf, we can change the perf in it, right? We can change the cruise altitude to, for example, 10,000 feet. You can see that the zero fuel weight is already uh, figured out. And then we've got the passengers. So we can say that we've got uh, two passengers because you need to always include the pilot and we don't have any cargo with us. And then we're coming to the takeoff and the takeoff normally you can define the uh, takeoff right using a flight plan you can select the runway which you're departing from the wind the temperature etc but for now we're gonna leave it as is uh, because i want to see if we can uh, switch on the engines again it's hard to see because we don't have any reference here which shows us if the engines are uh, switched on let me go to the outside the outside is here. It also doesn't look like that the control E key is working. That's that's pretty interesting. Let's see if we can get it working. Uh, some other people also reporting that they can't start the engines so there are two ways which we can do right we can try to figure out how to start the engines but it looks like that that for some reason doesn't work uh, it also would help if the lights would burn here so at least we could see what's happening because now you can't really see anything so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the main menu and then simply start from uh, i would say start in the air right that's not a trick if for some reason the uh, aircraft doesn't work then we're gonna do a custom uh, departure we're at 1500 feet that's fine for me let's try to see and if it really flies right let's check if the other functionalities are working So here we go. <clears throat> All kind of alerts. Doesn't look good, but it's flying. So let's hide them. And what we could have tried is, I would say, taking the uh, or selecting the default flight. You can also see that uh, there's some uh, work to do here in the cockpit itself, uh, right? Not all the buttons are working, which sometimes make it hard. For example, ice protection is not working. Uh, that would be really nice. <laughs> so let's see if we can turn around. Oh yeah, of course, autopilot is switched on. Reduce the engine speed a bit. Cameras are working fine, right? You can simply look left and right. So we're flying. It's also making a very cool sound. So let's see if the flaps are working. Yes, they're working, you can see them. Right. You can, if we're gonna look closer at the, uh, the aircraft, we will see them. Uh, these are the flaps. You can see that there's also some work to do on the, I would say, on the uh, bottom of the aircraft, right? There's some some lines which I wouldn't expect there. So 
So let's go inside and let's see if the autopilot works. Gonna change the altitude. Oh, a little bit too high. <laughs> Looks like it does not even change, right? So let me see if the autopilot works by pressing the AP button. It doesn't look like to work, right? So that's cool. Uh, challenge. So let me see if the vertical speed option is working. Of course, I also don't want to crash the aircraft. It's a little bit weird if you look at this screen or these screens, right? It's climbing, but it's also showing the pitch from positive to really negative. So that's normal, normally not what it is, right? Normally you would expect that it would, uh, would do its stuff. Uh, also, yule damper can't be deactivated. Uh, adding can be moved as you can see so it looks oh, and then we crashed so it looks like the autopilot is partially working so let's uh, give it another try and let's see if we can manipulate the uh, the autopilot um, again right it's a converted model and converted models are sometimes causing some more issues because it simply is not only converting there's more work to do uh, you can see the uh, alerts here so let's see if we can change the altitude that's another thing right it goes to 45,000 feet directly and you can't change it that's kind of I would say funny between brackets uh, let's see if we can change the vertical speed yes we can change it but it's a little bit weird because it's continuously fluctuating. So it's climbing, but this would should be a stable number. Then if we're pressing the heading option, uh, that works, right? It starts now to turn into the heading that we uh, configured, which was uh, 000. <coughs> also cool. Uh, flight level change also looks like to work you can see that it sets the fixed speed and it starts to climb now uh, the weird thing is however that it reset the altitude again so there's some some work to do on this one so if we set it i would say pressing the button looks like to work so at least that sets it to a reasonable value so i'm gonna press flight level change again Or let's use the uh, this one, the pitch. That works, and you can see it's now in old select mode. The pitch values are kind of weird, to be honest. And slowly climbing now to uh, fifteen hundred, although it's now. Yeah, so this also requires some work. It does not look like to work 100% correctly. Also inside and outside, the sound of the aircraft is completely different. Yeah, it looks like that you're in, I would say, not sure what it is, but a kind of a rotor plane, a small one. Well, this one is really, I would say, the I think the sound of, uh, of this uh, aircraft, right? Of this Lockheed. So, <clears throat> this is also where this uh, head-on spotlight ends. So it's a nice aircraft, but again, it's not, I would say, finished. There's still a lot of work to do, and it's, I would say, you can use it to make small trips, but it's not ready for big trips yet, because there's uh, some functionality which is not working as expected. I uh, hope you liked this video. If you liked it, then consider to use the like button. If you've got questions or comments, then feel free to 
post a comment in the comment box below the video. And if you want to stay up to date about new videos I'm posting, then consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.